Last summer, I was walking in a huge crowd on the Canadian side of the Niagara River, just below Niagara Falls. On the other side, parallel, was a vast throng of Americans walking on that side of the river. And I couldn't help as an American on the Canadian side as we were walking amidst thousands and thousands of people, how much safer I was, how much safer my daughter was, how much safer my wife was, how much safer every person was on the Canadian side, how much less likely it was that somebody would jump out of a bush with a semi-automatic rifle and begin killing by the dozens or hundreds. It is the common feature in American life, the truism that it can happen at any place, at any time, anywhere, that someone will take a firearm, usually in the cases of the mass killings, an AR-15 or a derivative stock, and they'll murder at scale with the weapon of war. No one is safe anywhere in America from this. And the one thing that is for sure is that there'll be another mass shooting after this, and then another, and another after that, and more and more and more and more and more. The only way to make it stop is for the American people to demand that it stops. But apparently as a society, we aren't there yet. So yesterday, once again, the headlines rang out. There had been another school shooting at the Covenant School in Nashville, Tennessee. When I was beginning this today, I said to my producer, can you bring up the picture of the congressman posing with the semi-automatic weapons around his Christmas tree? And I was thinking about Thomas Massey, of course, from Kentucky. And I remembered that he was, in fact, from Kentucky, not Tennessee. And I thought to myself, is it possible that there's more than one of these guys who posed with their families all holding semi-automatic weapons in front of a Christmas tree? And indeed, there is. Andy Ogles, the congressman from the very district where the slaughter occurred, posed with his family, all of them holding weapons to celebrate Christmas of all days. This has nothing to do with what your position on guns is. This is evidence of societal decay, sickness. The National Rifle Association was once a gun owners group, a hunting rights group. It's become one of the most corrupt organizations in the United States under the leadership of Wayne LaPierre. It's a grift, a dangerous and deadly one that has incited mayhem by fetishizing extremist militia gun culture and confusing it with everyday gun owners. The American people have to put a stop to this insanity. It's going to require people who have never held a gun, never fired one, working with people who are responsible gun owners and like to target, shoot, and hunt to keep these dangerous weapons out of the hands of people who should not have them. Murderers. Yesterday, it happened again. In the middle of the afternoon, there was an explosion of violence. A sick person blew through the glass and entered a school. And they blew away three adults and blew away three nine-year-old little children. Who wants to live in a country where anywhere, at any moment, at any time, this can happen? It is antithetical to the American ideal, the notion that we should pursue happiness. How can any American pursue happiness where for millions of parents, every time they say goodbye to their kids, they hope that it won't be the last time because a gunman might enter their school that day and kill all the children. This is an intolerable situation in the United States, and it must be brought to heel. There's a fundamental misconception about the Second Amendment. 
and a fundamental misconception about gun laws. A lot of Republicans, MAGA Republicans specifically, would have you believe that it's not possible to make a legal gun illegal under federal law without violating the Second Amendment. It's simply not true. There are lots of weapons that have been illegal under federal law for a very long time, going all the way back to 1934 under the Federal Firearms Act, what was called the machine gun law, aimed at the Thompson 45 submachine gun that was in use by organized crime and gangsters and was being used to shoot up the America of that time. Those weapons, these machine guns, automatic weapons, sawed-off shotguns, have been illegal under U.S. federal law for 90 years. The question at hand is, should the AR-15 and its derivatives be added to that list? Yesterday, again, the weapon of choice was a semi-automatic rifle like an AR-15, which this appears to be. Should that weapon, a weapon of war in my view, be added to the list of prohibited federal firearms? What can be done to keep these murdering weapons away from the sick people who would aim, point, and fire at a child? Is there an issue more urgent in our land? Is this an issue where ideology is required, where dogma is the answer? Of course not. Common sense is the way. The one thing that we know for sure is that there will be more incidents in the future. Again and again and again, the shots will ring out and more children will die and they'll die in schools. And it could be any school, anywhere, anytime, any day, any place. There's no community that's insulated or safe from this. The evil can manifest itself anywhere. We have 300 million guns in America. We are all hostage to this. Isn't it time to end the hostage situation? Isn't it time to pass sane gun laws? To build a coalition of sane Americans? of gun owners, responsible hunters and sportsmen, people who have never fired a gun one time in their life, people who have no interest, but have an appreciation for the culture and the importance of hunting for millions of American families, to come together in common cause to solve a massive problem for American society. I'll always remember that walk on the American border, looking across the raging Niagara River below, the crowds looked identical, moving in harmony, parallel to one another in two different countries. Yet one was so much safer. What a tragic day. The worst part about it, beyond the deaths of these babies and these adults who lived their life trying to prepare those kids for the future is the sure knowledge that it's going to happen again and again and again after that. We're not helpless to do anything about it, but it sure seems like that some days. It's time to sweep away an era and a system that tolerates this. The American people should be safe. And that starts with our kids in their schools.